Would you talk about the process uh, about fr that you went through from reading the story to researching it and um, how faithful you stayed to the facts in the case? Sure. Um, just to kind of start with the end, um, as far as uh, being faithful uh, to the facts of the case, um, I didn't go farther than than what happened, and the, it's a lot of what is in the film is 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 from a particular case, but certain uh, details that one might think were like uh, I made up or something, like the jumping jacks, for instance, uh, happened eight eight different times on eight of eight of the seventy cases. Um, so I, I was pretty the the things that happen are, are not any farther than or you know. Uh, what you saw in, in the, the film. And in fact, some of the cases were much weirder. Uh, even some of them were, uh, one involved a, a woman who was a manager who got convinced that there was a sex offender out in the front lobby and there was also undercover policemen out in the front lobby. And if she walked out naked, the sex offender would stand up and then the like undercover policeman would catch him. And she did it. She walked out naked. So, I mean, so, um, so it, it happened a bunch of times. But I found the story from, I was reading about um, some kind of f famous 1960s uh, human uh, behavioral psychology experiments, uh, particularly Stanley Milgram's obedience experiments. Does anyone familiar with these? These are electroshock uh, experiments where two people are brought into a room and uh, one is told that they're going to be a teacher and the other one's going to learn and they're going to find out, uh, you know, what are the negative effects of, or it, negative reinforcement, does that help you learn? And they take the, the, the learner and put him in a room and put electric uh, electrodes on his head and uh, close the door and say, okay, now ask him these questions and whenever he gets a question wrong, I want you to give him an electric shock. And um, the guy is really an actor. It's not real. He's not really being electrocuted. But he starts to act like he is on the other side of the door and say, like, ow, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. And, um, and at some point, almost everybody turns to the scientist and says, like, you know, this guy is saying he doesn't want to do it anymore. We should probably, like, st stop. And then the, that's when the scientist says, uh, you know, like, this is my experiment. Not important, you know, like, you just, what is important for you is to just continue, I take full responsibility. It's not on you, it's all on me. You just need to continue forward. And the crazy thing about it, the reason that the experiments are kind of like really well known is that they, uh, A, are repeatable. I mean, you always get the same amount of people that do this. They, they did them in 1961 and they did them again in like 2007. And they actually did them, a TV show in uh, England a couple of years ago did them. Uh, just on its own even. A and it's almost always the same that about 65%, between 62 and 70% of people will give what they think are like, they think they're giving lethal amounts of, of electric shock to someone. I and they won't be doing it because they're sadistic and want to hurt them. They, they, mostly it's a very traumatic experience for them, but they're still kind of doing it. And I was reading about these just really fascinated and that's kind of where I found uh, these uh, stories because very often people kind of point to uh, these fast food scams as like exhibit A of, of, of these things. So. But in, uh, while you were going through your research and, and, you, uh, and um, I, I think you know you were saying at the beginning of the film you found the initial stories quite hard to believe uh, but did you did your judgments change did you what, in the process of making the film did your judgments about the people involved change or from, from yeah, I mean, I guess like the reason. Well, it's like, why would you? Why did you make a film like this? I mean, obviously, it's not a breezy charmer, right? It's like, <laughs> why do you make this movie? And I mean, for me, like, I, I just, I guess, I, I like, pretty quickly was, I was so, I was so judgmental against it, and I was so like, the, I remember thinking those people, and whenever you say those people, man, like you're just not doing something right, and so like I was like, wow, all right, what. It, have I ever been in any sort of a scenario? Can I imagine a scenario? Like, is it because they're less intelligent than me or something? And something didn't click with that. It didn't seem, A, like 70 cases in 30 states over 10 years. Like, it's enough of a sample that it's not, doesn't feel accurate, for one. But also it was like, I, I, before I directed films, and I had another film, uh, Great World of Sound, which uh, the festival played uh, in 2007. Um, 
but before I, I was doing th this, I was working in films and working as a production manager, um, like on other people's movies and like making sure that the catering truck was parked in the right place and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, awesome stuff. <laughs> um, and uh, and and there was a day I remember. I remember when I was first reading about the case and hadn't decided to make a movie. But I remember like thinking back on a day when we were shooting a, a, another film. And because of an actor's schedule and a location availability issue, we shot like a 19-hour day, work day, that was at a place that was an hour away from where everybody lived. And so, essentially, people had been awake for 20 hours, and like we were asking them to drive an hour home. And I knew that it was a horrible idea, but I was middle management. I, couldn't, I didn't feel like I could stop it. I was just like, okay, I guess we're doing this. Don't die, but, you know. But it's like I didn't, I didn't say no. We need to stop shooting, you know. Like I should have said no a lot earlier. This is bad. We need to stop doing this. I don't care, you know. I'm putting my foot down. And I didn't. And I guess like when I thought that story, when I remembered that story, I said, of course this can happen. I don't know. They are, and it was really a, a challenge just to, it was, the casting part was the, the challenge. It was really, it, this was not a movie that these people made a lot of money, as you can probably imagine. Um, so it was like it had to be people that were fascinated with the, the subject matter, and, um, and everybody involved was like very much on board because they had the same questions. And, 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 and as much as the film is very tense, the atmosphere on set was not quite that. It was. It was. It's very hard to like live in that world for 18 days all day. <laughs> you know, so, um, so it wasn't. It was actually very collaborative, and and you know, as far as things like when I was talking with Dreama uh, Walker, who plays Becky, you know, like we had mapped out exactly kind of like what was going to be shot and what was going to be seen and discussed that in depth kind of beforehand and so there was like a lot to kind of making sure that it was collaborative on that tip and really like in the sense of like why are we making this movie? Like, we're making this movie to ask these questions, and they pushed me at times. I mean, I was actually like willing at some points to like back off, and people were like, no, you need to go for it, and so, so hopefully that answers. Um, I just, I think it's funny, I don't know, it's an interesting question. It, I, I've gotten it whenever I've shown the film, and in France it would never happen either, and, and, <laughs> and in, in uh, Locarno it would never happen either. The weird thing is that Sundance Film Festival in, in Utah it would never happen, <laughs> is the problem. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I, I guess like the question is like, well certainly history has laid out times when um, people haven't, I mean, Italy, come on. Like, really? <laughs> like. <laughs> but, but, I did, but, I, but, but at the same time, I recognize that it's American, and I recognize it's Americanness, and I'm in America, so I'm thinking about our relationship to the world right now. <laughs> Um, so the, the in the the real story uh, that this is mostly comes from uh, the character uh, that Becky is someone based on did sue with she joined with the Sandra character and the um, and the the assistant manager and the three of them brought a lawsuit against McDonald's and um, they actually won because McDonald's was involved in three other cases of this and it hadn't really, they had issued kind of a piece of paper that had said like, hey, there's phone calls that are pranks, don't listen to them, but they hadn't like spelled out really what it was. Um, so they argued that they weren't really well versed or, t t you know, that there was a burden of, you know, responsibility uh, that the, the company had and uh, they won and they won, she, she won six million dollars out of it. Um, and then, as far as who the what happened to the the um, caller, uh, 
there was a guy who was arrested very similarly to, he, he was caught in a similar way that they tracked a, a calling card to, they actually saw his hat, the name of a company on a hat of a guy buying a calling card at a Walmart. And they like called that company and somehow figured it out and found this guy and went to his house and actually found other calling cards that were connected to uh, like eight other cases that went back about five years. And there were also like, um, it, this guy had also applied to become a police officer several times and like been, had been rejected because of psychological profile. Um, literally, and like, but he always said he never did it. And um, the defense from the from his defend his defender was that that he wasn't clever enough to to be able to pull it off. And it, and ultimately, just because of the burden of proof being really high to prove that someone did it, it was all the evidence was too circumstantial, and and he was uh, found not guilty uh, uh, of it. But all of the phone calls have stopped since since that trial. So.